Okay, hello class. This is Shay. I'm going to show you how to do your venipuncture um, procedure today. Uh, before I start, I want to show you the supplies that we're going to be using. And I kind of want to show you what you can do at home since you won't have the supplies with you, okay? So let me get into that. First thing I have is your needles. In class, we're going to be working with two different size needles. This is a black one and this is a green one. Now, this one already has the hub attached. I'll talk to you about that in just a second. But right now, I want to explain the sizes. We have a 22 gauge and a 21 gauge. The bigger the number, the smaller the needle. So this black one is a 22. It will be a smaller gauge needle than the green one, which is a 21. The 21 is larger. We will utilize both of these in class. Majority of the time, we'll be using the green one, okay? And then I want to explain to you that this is a hub. The hub is attached to the green one already. With this one, it's not attached. You would actually have to attach the needle to the hub to do the procedure, okay? Hub, holder, those are two different names for it. So this is what you'll use in your venipuncture uh, procedure, and it's called the evacuated tube system. Your needle, your hub, and your tube will be called the evacuated tube system. Your tube, um, we'll work with different colors in here, but the light blue one, of course, this is the first tube in your order of draw. You will fill this up all the way if you are in the field, but in class, we're just gonna fill it to the amount that we need. We have a Band-Aid, we have gauze, and we have your needle at home. My needle's like this here, but you have a needle at home. Just use a pen. We're just doing make pretend, so we're gonna utilize what we have at home. I actually made some make pretend for you with paper. Band-Aid, a tube, your alcohol, and your gauze, okay? You'll also need your gloves. Here's my gauze here. All right, we'll also use a tourniquet in class. Um, since you're at home, you can just do the motion, or if you can find something that you can wrap around an arm, then utilize that as pretend, okay? The papers that I have on this table is a requisition form. I want you to walk into your room with this form. Your steps, you can follow in a venipuncture packet. And I also have these steps here that you can follow and sit by you just in case you don't miss any steps. I have my fake arm here. I'm gonna choose this vein right here because it's kind of in the middle. Like I said, I want you to try the middle vein first and then you'll work your way out to the cephalic vein. So you have your median cubital, your cephalic, and then your basilic would be on the inside of the arm, okay? So first things first, I'm gonna take my requisition and I'm gonna walk into the room and introduce myself, and then I'm gonna to explain to you what I want you to ask the, uh, the patient, okay? Hello, my name is Shay. I'm gonna be your student phlebotomist today. The doctors ordered some lab work. Um, is it okay that I draw your blood? Is right now a good time? Okay. Can you please verify your first and last name? Can you verify your date of birth? Okay, thank you. Everything looks good. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands right now and gather my supplies. I'm gonna gather my gloves, my gauze, my alcohol, my bandage, my needle and my hub, my tube, my tourniquet. Okay, I have all my supplies. I'm gonna put my gloves on and I'm gonna verify my patient's information, such as their draw history and anything else that needs to be addressed. So my first question is, and I want y'all to ask these five questions, and I'm gonna tell you why you're asking these five questions. So my first question will be, have you had your blood drawn before? My second one would be, are you on any blood thinners? Third, are you fasting? The fourth one, are you, do you have any diet restrictions? And the fifth one, 
Are you allergic to latex? Now, why I'm asking this? Draw history. You need to see if they've had their blood drawn before because they might have had uh, any issues or complications before, such as fainting. So you wanna make sure you ask, have they had their blood drawn before? If they say yes, you wanna see, uh, did you experience any complications? If they say yes or no, you wanna make sure you know what those complications were. If they were fainting, you wanna make sure you lay them down while you're drawing their blood. That way they don't slouch or fall out while you're giving, drawing their blood, okay? The second one is blood thinners. When they are on blood thinners, of course it thins their blood, so after you're finished sticking them, you have to cover their, their vein um, or that spot for an increased period of time because they can bleed out longer than someone that's not on blood thinners because it's easier for the blood to come out when it's thinned out. So make sure you have that gauze on there, make sure you check and that it stopped bleeding before you put that bandage on there when you're done, okay? The third one, um, any diet restrictions. Some tests that they do require that the patient be on a certain diet. Um, sometimes you can't eat certain things or drink certain things before you get the test done because they might be testing for that certain thing. So make sure that you ask them, are they on any diet restrictions? The fourth one is fasting. Sometimes tests require for you to fast. Eight, hour, eight to 12 hours, you need to fast and make sure you don't drink anything else but water. Um, that is very important. And if they are fasting, or they should know that they should be fasting for that test, but just check and make sure on your requisition that you know this test requires that. Um, only, wa only water is what you can have when you're fasting. Um, and then the last one is allergic to latex. Usually facilities don't use latex, but it's good to ask that question anyway, uh, just to get a confirmation. Okay, so I'm gonna run through that again one more time. Hi, my name is Shay. I'm gonna be your student phlebotomist today. The doctors ordered some lab work. Is it okay that I draw your blood? Yes or no? Is it a good time? Yes. Okay, I'm going to get my supplies together and wash my hands. All right, I have everything together. Um, have you had your blood drawn before? Are you on any blood thinners? Are you fasting? Do you have any diet restrictions? And are you allergic to latex? Okay, everything looks all good. I have my requisition. I know what tests I'm drawing for. All right, I'll set that aside. I verified their first and last name earlier. I'm sorry, I didn't repeat that. Can you please verify your first and last name and your date of birth? You must have two identifiers, their name, their date of birth, or their um, ID number. They might have, depending on their inpatient or outpatient. So we'll get to that next week. And let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is put my tourniquet under their arm and I want to tuck it with one finger. We'll go over how to tuck a tourniquet in class together. I'm going to palpate. Palpate is choosing the vein. So you wanna make sure you choose your correct vein. I'm gonna start in the middle. I use my index or my middle finger as you don't have any real thick filling in your thumb. So you wanna make sure you don't use your thumb to palpate. Palpate is bouncing, feeling where that vein is. The vein usually bounces back at you. So you can feel where that's at. You can go over. The second one you wanna feel is the cephalic feel for that one, and then you can feel for your bacilli. Of course, I'm gonna go for the median cubital as that's the one I want you to go for. You felt for it, you feel where you're going. You wanna make sure when you draw your, um, draw your blood that you're gonna go the direction of the vein. This vein is going slightly to the left, so when I draw, I wanna make sure my needle goes that way. All right, so I felt for the vein. The tourniquet cannot be on for more than one minute. So after you feel for the vein, go ahead and take it off, let the arm rest, and then you're gonna put your supplies together. I'm gonna go ahead and go for my green since this is the common one that we use. Throw this away in your trash. You always wanna keep your station clean. This needle top does not come off until you are ready to stick. This has to stay on. You cannot recap this needle if you're not ready. You'd have to get rid of the whole 
um, equipment and start with the fresh one, okay, if you uncap. You don't wanna recap because you can potentially stick yourself and we wanna pre prevent that from happening. So safety first. I wanna make sure that my sharps container is right here on the table because right after I'm finished, this whole system has to go into the sharps. It cannot lay on a table. It cannot be in your hand waving around. You have to put it in a sharps container. So now I have my needle ready and my tube is here. I know where I'm going, so I'm gonna clean my site with my alcohol. And then I want my gauze here as well. All this needs to go on the side of, of your arm and it also needs to go on the side of the hand you're not using to stick. I'm left-handed, so my stuff is gonna go on the right side. If you're right-handed, you would put it on this side, okay? And my last thing is my bandage. I like to get it open first. Not out of the package, just open. That way, I just don't take too much time, okay? All right. So I know where I'm going. If you don't know where you're going, put your tourniquet back on, feel for your vein again, take it back off and clean. All right, so I'm gonna clean right here in this area. You wanna go in a circle, start at the center of where you're sticking and work your way outwards. Big round, clean that whole area. You're gonna dispose of your alcohol now you're gonna allow that to air dry. Do not blow or wave or fan that can uh, contaminate the site. You're gonna put your tourniquet back on. You wanna make sure it's tight enough to where that pressure builds up on that vein. All right, you're gonna ask your patient to clench their fist. Have them clench their fist and let's get ready to sit. I wanna show you how to hold the tube. So, you take your needle off. You wanna make sure you have three fingers at the bottom of that hub, three fingers at the bottom of the hub, and the hole of the needle, which is the bevel, is upward. So you wanna make sure you inspect that needle first. Make sure the hole is up and that your fingers, three at the bottom, your thumb at the top. First thing you're gonna do is anchor. That is pulling the skin down. You wanna be about one to two inches under the site you're going to stick. You don't wanna be right under the site because you can potentially stick yourself. So make sure you're about two inches under the site away from where you're sticking. You're gonna go at a 30 degree angle. So 15 to 30 degree angle. So this is straight, this is about 30 degrees. You're gonna go in, mount your fingers on the, the patient's skin. That way you have uh, stability and support. Put your fingers there, put your needle through and stop. All right, after you do that, you can stop anchoring. You're gonna get your tube. You're gonna put your tube on right here. And then there's sides of the hub called phalanges. You wanna utilize the phalanges to stick your tube on. It is easier than just pushing it on with one finger. So I'm just gonna show you. These are the phalanges here. When you stick it on, you wanna use your index in your middle, your thumb at the end, and you're gonna push on. All right, so I'm pushing on. All right, you're gonna allow the blood to fill up. In class, I don't want you to fill it up, but in your field, of course, you're gonna fill it up to the max. And then to take it off, you're gonna use the back end of the phalanges with the same fingers and pull off with your thumb and the other fingers, okay? You wanna invert for night blue three to four times. Okay, set that down. You wanna get your gauze and place it, don't push it, just place it over the top of your site. You don't wanna stick yourself, so you don't wanna push and have your fingers sitting on that site. So just place it over, swiftly move out, then press the site and hold. Okay, Mrs. Smith, can you please hold this for me? All right, while she's holding, the first thing you do after you take your needle out is activate your safety device. This is the safety device. This is mandated by OSHA. This is for your protection, okay? Activate safety, and after that, you're gonna put it into the shark container, make sure it drops down, and then you can check your uh, patient again. 
I'm sorry, I have to back up. I have to back up a bit, I'm sorry. Let's go with this one more time. All right. The bevel's up, I'm anchoring, I'm pushing the needle through. After you put your tube on, this is a step I missed. You wanna make sure you take your tourniquet off. Like I said earlier, you cannot have your tourniquet on for more than one minute. So right after you put this on and you see blood to flow, pop that tourniquet off, okay? Sorry about that mistake. All right, now I'm ready to take this off. Ready to get the needle out. Out, cover, activate safety. Put it in your shock container. Check your site, make sure it's not bleeding anymore. If it is, wait a minute, let it finish bleeding. Um, while you're holding that, or the patient's holding that, you can label your two. Okay, can you please verify your first and last name again? You're gonna write the first and last name. Can you please verify your date of birth? Also, what goes on the label is your initials, the time, the date, and of course their date of birth. So there's five things. First, last name, their initial, the time, the date, and their date of birth. Did I say that? Okay. All right. The patient has stopped bleeding. I'm gonna cover with the bandage. I'm gonna throw my trash away. All right, I'm gonna set this tube in the spot that you're supposed to. And then you're gonna thank your patient. Thank you, is everything okay? You feel all right? All right, thank you, Miss Smith. You have a good day. All right, and your patient is able to leave. You're gonna clean all your stuff up after you're done, you want to make sure you wipe your table down, make sure it's clean, everything's disinfected, and then you're good to go. All right. So I want you all to practice that at home. Send me a short video. Um, it's okay if you make mistakes. Obviously, I just made one. It's normal. It happens. But just make sure you try to correct it if you do find it. Um, I'll go over your videos, and we'll practice this in class next week. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.